Do you remember this? Manifest Destiny is a belief tied to Christian origins in America. It states that we are predestined by God to settle land out to the Pacific Ocean. We have a divine right to claim Mexican and Indian lands. American imperialism was a period between the 1890s and the 1910s when America, fueled by Manifest Destiny, extended its political, military, and economic control over weaker territories. The idea of Manifest Destiny told us to spread our Anglo-Saxon heritage from coast to coast. Once the western border was closed by the Pacific Ocean, we needed to find new territories to spread our beliefs and values. Three factors fueled U.S. imperialism. The first is a desire for greater military strength. The second was a search for new markets. And the third was a belief in our cultural superiority. For several decades now, the major powers of Europe and Asia had engaged in an age of empire. They vied for control of colonies in the Americas, in Africa, and in Asia. If the United States truly wanted to be a world power, it must catch up to the rest and claim an empire. First, let's talk about the desire for military strength. To compete in the world, the U.S. needed a dominant military. We needed to combine industry, innovation, resources, and strategic territories. Admiral Alfred Mahan created a plan for U.S. military dominance. First, we needed to build a modern navy. We created steam-powered and steel-hulled cruisers in order to compete with other nations across the world. We called this navy the Great White Fleet due to the fact that the hulls were painted white. Next, he desired to acquire Hawaii. This would create a naval base in the Central Pacific that would allow American military and economic ships a location to refuel and resupply. This base would become known as Pearl Harbor. Next, we would establish naval bases in the Caribbean. This would allow for control and dominance of the Western Hemisphere. Lastly, we would build a canal in Panama. This would make the trip from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean much quicker. You no longer had to travel around the tip of South America in order to get to the Pacific Ocean. This increased naval response time and allowed us to defend both shores of the United States. The second factor that fueled imperialism was the search for new markets. Industrialization had allowed mass production of products across America. The United States now had a surplus of goods and needed new places to sell them. The first step involved the raw materials that would come from the different territories that the United States would acquire. With given access to more resources and inputs, these raw materials would fuel continued mass production, profit, and growth. Then, the United States would engage in international trade. Using the raw materials from their territories, they can export more American goods to foreign markets, preventing waste and ensuring profits. The final reason is our belief in cultural superiority. The ideas of progressivism, such as morality and Christianity, factored into our drive to build an empire. America's British background made it natural for us to build empires. The British had spent centuries spreading its borders and colonizing most of the world. We felt it was in our destiny to follow in their footsteps. Also, social Darwinism, or survival of the fittest, left the United States on top of the world's civilized nations. Because we were the best, it's our duty to civilize inferior cultures and reform them. In the later half of the 1800s, as Americans progressed and improved society at home, we began to balance our affairs internationally across the world stage. Americans felt it was time for isolationism to be over. The United States had grown so powerful that it was time to expand. The age of imperialism would lead to war and would dominate foreign policy for decades to come. It's because of this era that the United States finally becomes a world power for the first time in its history. And the status we rise to during the imperialistic age leads us to where we sit in the world today.